Так, очень сложно читать доклад на одном языке, когда слайд на другом. Okay, it is going to be really difficult. Uh, I will be speaking in Russian, and uh, the slide presentation is uh, in English. Uh, will it be all right uh, if I make my presentation in English? Raise your hands, those who do not need the uh, translation. Now, uh, let's see who needs Russian. All right, no hands. Elliptical curves. Uh, okay. Теория эллиптической криптографии достаточно сложная. Я не буду сейчас в это уходить. Theory of uh, uh, cryptography is really difficult, but you can look up the definitions on Wikipedia. In fact, this is a new technology, uh, a new coding technology with two main advantages. The advantages are a shorter key with uh, a smaller number of bytes. When we're talking about uh, DNSSEC, uh, the second advantage is generation of mm, occasional numbers. Uh, every repeated time gives you a new number combination, which means a better chance of protecting yourself uh, from somebody being able to figure out the key combination. The information become unavailable to those who try to uh, get hold of it. Uh, 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 thus, uh, we uh, are able uh, to reduce uh, traffic uh, by factor 10 to 12. Um, uh, these uh, uh, curves are supported by um, relevant algorithm, and uh, I don't know why uh, SSA and CDSA are used at this point, but the, the traffic there is much more than DNS traffic. Uh, and um, I'm sure that in a few years we will uh, forget about uh, RSA and DSA uh, the same way we forgot about uh, SHARD. And uh, this protocol was considered experimental in the past, um, but um, now um, it's pretty uh, stable. Uh, there are some problems with it, though. Um, the problem of compatibility, uh, although uh, the majority of DNS servers are all already supporting it. Uh, there's a so-called patent encumbering, but that's only related to the United States. Uh, you can uh, see the presentation at our website. For the majority, uh, the U.S. Um, patent for most countries does not matter because that has nothing to do with their jurisdiction. I'm mentioning three uh, algorithms here, the analytical curves, which is the oldest uh, authorized in Russia uh, by um, uh, 34 tenths uh, governmental standard. Uh, and uh, there's a couple more that were authorized later. This is what I recommend for now. The easiest way for you uh, to use the curve in DNSSEC uh, is uh, to get this uh, free standard without applying any technical resources uh, of your own. Because otherwise, be prepared to do it independently, uh, to put together your own technical, um, your own technologies. Uh, you can. Uh, use uh, KSK as well. Also, uh, be prepared uh, that your registrar will uh, say, oh, this is not avail uh, available. Uh, in an uh, Istanbul meeting, one thing that was mentioned, uh, uh, the uh, root zone and uh, operator does not uh, support the curves on their server. Uh, so if we want to do it tomorrow, we will not be able to do it. We will be able to do it uh, with our equipment, but we cannot coordinate it with the root zone. It appears that this is only a, a, a checkup with the DNS, but the left hand here will be uh, receiving it from uh, DNS, uh, and the right hand will be receiving it from somebody else. There's no correlation here. But I think uh, sooner or later, the 
best option will be there. Here I am indicating once again the uh, RFCs that can be used for this, and you can also find this uh, info uh, on the net. Uh, and let me repeat one again that my uh, major recommendation is using the two algorithms indicated here. Um, these are newer ones, and these are the ones that are likely to be used in the future. Uh, EPNIC, which is the operator, uh, well, uh, the IP address uh, registry for um, Asia Pacific, uh, published uh, uh, research uh, including data on Ukraine. Uh, everything uh, was put together by Jeff Houston, who shows uh, the uh, percentage of customers uh, including percentage of customers in Ukraine. How did they do their calculations? They are using uh, Google AdWords network, those who buy this uh, advertisement, including customers in uh, Ukraine. Uh, when there's a picture uh, shown there, uh, it appears with the uh, IP address uh, and uh, this is registered as part of their data. So this is how they collect this data by using Google Resol Resolver. I will explain by color. Uh, Google Resolve, uh, DNSSEC uh, support, and uh, analytical curve support. These are the three uh, things that are uh, somewhat correlated. Uh, blue is validation of analytical curve. Uh, uh, orange uh, is support for the both algorithm and uh, the last one uh, support by uh, Google Resolve uh, and uh, the peak that you see there uh, obviously is related to some event that we uh, do not know what it is but that's not typical uh, the uh, um, Line itself uh, is is not it does not look too good at the uh, time, but uh, I am uh, sure that if you uh, use uh, DNSSEC, you will have the uh, same uh, problem because DNSSEC uh, is uh, not uh, very much uh, supported. The clients, the providers that are supporting uh, DNSSEC are aware of it. Uh, and uh, it would be best to use the most recent technologies here. Uh, in fact, this is the end of my presentation and there's a, a reference uh, and I have some links here uh, of how you can receive additional information. Let me add that on experimental basis, uh, we used uh, the only second level domain. Um, Um, uh, Cloud Fair uh, is indicating this minimal site. I don't know who of you uh, have used DNSSEC or other algorithm. If you have similar experience, please raise your hand. Okay, I see there are some people. Okay, uh, if there are any questions, I'm, I'm ready to answer them. Uh, microphones, please. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Dmitry. I hope that um, other people hear my uh, question. My question is about uh, the encryption between the user and the NCR. How do we do that? Uh, further, uh, root uh, certificates and who can be the trust for uh, DNSSEC because at this point in time it's a, a clearinghouse uh, and uh, in the future it must be a, a separate industry. We all heard the presentation made by Alexander Kulikov who told us how this house works, uh, how this chamber works with ICANN. The identification of response of the server is one thing. Identification of traffic is a separate different issue. Uh, 
Uh, maybe Dmitry wants to comment on this. Uh, the trust chain is one thing uh, between the company uh, .ue, uh, and uh, it is another issue when you get DNS traffic, you can get DNS at traffic that is changed. For instance, in Kazakhstan, they had this idea of national certification um, so that not only DNS, but all traffic is used uh, is using other uh, domain names. Uh, and you can have, let me put it like this, an interesting effect uh, of the change of uh, DNS traffic, like some addresses will be removed, some websites will be uh, blocked, uh, which are not particularly like by the government of the country uh, so that you could introduce changes into DNS traffic um, as well as any other important protocol but this is uh, uh, as, uh, but we do not have any standard solutions that would be implemented uh, everywhere uh, some operators may be able to support something that others uh, are not. Uh, more questions? Uh, uh, Dmitry, a question on your statistics. 25% of how many? Uh, of the number of uh, how many customers did you look at? Uh, approximately 25. 25 customers? No. 25%. No. I mean, uh, what was the initial pool? Uh, unfortunately, they do not give you this information. Uh, but I'm sure that the pool was uh, large enough. You can go to a, a EPNIC website, uh, and they uh, show you the data. Uh, and I agree that uh, maybe the pool was too small. But I hope it was probably sufficient.